So imagine that we had two people who wanted to communicate. They're going to need to have a means of communicating and also they're going to need to have a set of rules for communicating. A set of rules that would come with their language, a protocol for speaking to each other, for being polite. So let's give them a language, but it could be any language of course. And let's define this uh, level of protocols as the language. Now, of course, you could easily change English for another language and each language would have its own set of rules. And it wouldn't hurt if they changed from one language to another part way through if they were bilingual. Now, although it seems like this man is communicating directly with this woman. In actual fact, there's something lower level going on as well. So, you know, how are they going to communicate? Well, it might be verbally or face to face, but on the other hand, they might be on their mobiles. So let's consider another level. So let's give them a device. I'll give him an old mobile phone and I'll give her something a little bit newer. Now, we've now defined a new layer in our protocol stack and it doesn't matter that we've chosen mobiles because we could have used, used landlines or, well, anything you like it makes no difference. But hopefully you can see now that the communication, rather than going directly between the people, is actually going more like this. The man speaks into his phone, the phone then sends some data, and then it's received there, and of course vice versa as well. On each layer in our protocol stack it looks like the communication is direct, but actually it's reliant on the layers below it. And don't forget, like I said earlier, we could easily change language and we could easily easily change device, we could change type of phone, we might even change so that we're not using a phone. A postcard, for example. So how does a phone communicate with another phone? Well, presumably it needs some sort of service. And I'm going to assume here that we're using some sort of mobile service, so I'll have a transmitter like this. And so one transmitter communicates with another transmitter and I'll just assume that it's 4G, but it could be anything else. I suppose we better just put in mobile there, like that. So now the mobile connects to the transmission station, transmitter, whatever it is, the repeater, and then that then connects with another transmission station, and then of course that goes to the mobile, which then goes to the person. So you can see that each layer depends on another layer. And of course, if we change to 2G, 3G, 4G, 5G, it's all still going to work. They're still going to be able to communicate. And in fact, one person talking to another wouldn't be aware of what's going down at lower levels. So let's have an even lower level. Let's think about maybe the physical level. I mean, actually, how does this send a signal to this? Well, because we're going wireless, let's just assume that we're going to have some sort of radio wave which is going to be received as a radio wave. But it doesn't have to be radio waves. I mean, it could be electrical signals going down some wire or optical signals going down some fiber optics. It doesn't really matter, does it? Well, let's assume that it's a radio wave being transmitted through the air. So hopefully now you understand that this service is going to depend upon some sort of physical transmission medium and then it goes back up there like that. 
Now, it should now be quite apparent that each side has its own layer of the protocol which is going to match up. So this language hopefully is going to match up with this language. And this device is going to be compatible with this device. Not necessarily the same make, but it will be compatible. This service is going to be compatible with this service. Can't write there, can I? And this physical transmission medium, or whatever we might want to call it, is going to be compatible with that one. So, hopefully you now understand about the whole concept of a protocol stack. And also, and this is really important, you understand the concept that you can change one layer in the protocol stack without necessarily having to change any of the others. For example, if we decided that we were going to change from radio transmission to fiber optics, it wouldn't make any difference to anything above. If we were to change from 4G to 5G equally, we might still not notice that at any other level. And also we could have developers who are working and their specialist knowledge would be in 4G and providing a service, but they might not know anything about the English language with the protocol stack that we can conceptually understand that everything is like in a different level. And then so it makes it just easier to comprehend. Hopefully now that's become clear and then we can move on to looking at the TCP IP protocol stack, which doesn't use these same four stack layers, but it has the same sort of similar, uh, same sort of feature in that it's broken up into different layers.